just in case we say the most revolutionary thing that it's going to be world changing, we've gone ahead and hit the record button, even though we're not even sure. You know, we um we, we actually yes, as you can tell, we haven't even had a wardrobe change. So gonna, we did roll our sleeves up or something. Yeah. So yeah, we uh we did just record the last podcast and we did a little work and now we're just sitting down thinking again about really we're just brainstorming on what do you even call this? I keep I keep the term. I learned it from a guy who was running a mini maker fair out of California and he called it manual literacy. And as soon as he said it, I mean I wanted to flip the desk over. I was like, Boy, George, that's it. That's exactly that's exactly what was needed in order for a lot of the kids that were intentionally in, in school suspension with me needed. <laughs> well, and really, you know, there aren't really once you get out of almost, we'll say second grade, there's not a lot of options to really just be working with your hands. It's all about writing at that point and doing math and regurgitating you know, factoids. Yeah, regurgitating factoids. There's not a lot of opportunity to even study this pair of wire strippers and be like, what do all the little things on this thing do? Like, even now that I look at this, I don't even know what that bottom thing does exactly. I assume it's some type of crimp, but it says 7 to 8 millimeter auto. I don't know what that means. What do y'all do? Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, you know, we don't get those opportunities to just kind of mess with something and be like, huh, oh, well, how does this work? What all does it do? Because, yeah, I mean, if y'all didn't know, just, just on another rabbit trail, these little holes right here, they're for making nice little loops in your wire. But yeah, we do we do love Klein strippers. They, <laughs> again, they haven't sponsored. No, <laughs> but we were really, just having a bit about we, wire strippers the other night. We wouldn't be mad about it if they did. Like, yeah. you, know what? you guys, we're gonna invest in that train wreck. That's awesome. <laughs> the the thing about okay, I met a person who had actually got a master's degree in tool science. Like what their area of study was. That but, sounds fun. Doesn't it? <laughs> I was like, I didn't even know that was an option because, like, you're right. There isn't a whole lot. Of, like after about second grade, there's not a whole lot of working with your hands. You might get asked to make a model of a volcano, and this is, you know, it, each kid can, on happenstance, run into an incredible educator that gets them to do stuff without them knowing it. But the things that ended up in the library being lined up that the whole class participated in, that's about it for manual literacy until you get to high school. And then in high school, they're starting to push a profession on you. So it doesn't have anything to do with play. It doesn't have anything to do with learning. It has to do with how are we going to get you out of our face? Like, yeah. how do we get you out of our house? You know, there are benchmarks, you know, for like graduation rates. There are benchmarks for how many people you send to college. There are not benchmarks for... How many plumbers did you create, you know, create jobs for? How many electricians did you get out the door? You know, th these skilled trades, you know, that, you know, schools, there's no real things that, you know, that, that they have to shoot for. They're not even creating the things that make the school function. So they're, they're missing out on a whole amount of civil industry that actually makes their town operate literally. Mm -hmm. So what they're shooting for is how do we make this town seem great? And then they're, not focusing enough on how do we actually make it function great because if we don't have plumbers and the school has a plumbing issue that i mean that we had countless times where the whole senior hall was down like somebody was a jerk and needed some attention and maybe a hug and instead they shoved a toilet full of stuff and and now the whole senior <laughs> hall is done so like they had to mitigate that okay we don't have any plumbers Great. Let's send more kids into things that we're projecting on. You know, like you can be an, an, you know, an actuary. You can be a, you know, car salesman. All of those things. Every facet that the educators produce is worthy of value. However, they're not viewing it that way. So they're not focusing on those trade fields. And if you can't get the senior bathroom hall fixed. <laughs> then, then cool. freshmen, yeah, I mean, then you have kids of the wrong classes, kind of like the literally, you know, seniors and freshmen don't need to be in the same. They're learning about different things about their bodies. They don't need to, you know, it's better that yeah. they each have their own bathroom. Well, you know, you bring up a good point there. I hadn't even thought about it until you just said it. But if you look at a school's operating budget, and I, I would assume, I've never looked at one, but I would assume that... You know, employee expenses would be number one, you know, paying payrolls. And number two is probably 
building maintenance. Pro- yeah, property I mean, management. Yeah. I mean, that's so, a ton of property. Yeah, I mean, fixing the electrical, fixing the plumbing, you know, the roof. I mean, that that that's a major expenses. And obviously, if those are major expenses, those are probably major job opportunities. Yeah. And we don't talk about them at all. I was in the insurance industry for a long time, right? And part of part of what the risk mitigation is, is that when you live in a structure, you care that you're going to live there. Mm-hmm. So at a school, nobody there has an invested interest in the actual building. I mean, mm-hmm. people are actively running from it. Like nobody wants to be in there. So that you have uh, an unmitigated risk with people that actually don't care about the property. And on top of it, you're not focusing any any value being produced from the people that are participating in it is a major missed opportunity that I had never thought of until this exact conversation. So yeah, it's a good thing we hit record. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so we, we are still, uh, yeah. Welcome to talks with Tim, the uh, podcast that sometimes we just hit the record button and we're not exactly sure even what the subject is yet. Yeah. But really, you know, what what it comes down to, Mary and I, we do, we sit here and, you know, we're, we're usually building a trainer or working on a control panel and we have these conversations and it's like, man, I mean, it all comes down to how do we get more people into these trades industries? Because, I mean, I love it. How are you liking it? I love it. Yeah. I mean, and it's like, if you go to career fair, you're not going to find either of us there. No. They won't invite us. I would love no. for them to invite us. I even there was a career fair. Unfortunately, got canceled, you know, for, I won't use the C word, but, no. that, you know, yes. No, no. It did get canceled. That's the C word, canceled. Canceled. <clears throat> yeah. But I was like, oh, career fair. How come they didn't invite me? And then I looked at the list of the people and it's like, yeah, banker, mortgage, insurance, colleges. <laughs> the closest thing to our industry that they do invite are mitigation companies because they are required. Yeah. Um, and roofing contractors, uh, which are, I mean, everything's necessity, right? And it's subjective on the value, but definitely roofs are important. Yeah. We figure that out. And none of us want to live in a cave anymore. So <laughs> roofs are important. And so are mitigation of those things. But how, how people get into those different facets is... We got an email the other day that said that a construction a you know construction firm was invited to the career fair and i'm like but but the construction agents none of that industry can be supported without some of the stuff that we deal with yeah well and i mean like how are the shingles made well yeah. by machines that we build yeah it's, it's interesting where where are we even going with this i think yeah. we are going into yeah how do we get our industry in front of students yeah or industries in general because i mean I said, I see so many people that accidentally get into this industry. I would see more people accidentally get in this industry than actually <laughs> plan on it in high school. It's always some crooked road that they ended up in here. I yeah. think that it's, from my experience, I grew up in a factory town and it was very stratted on the can haves and the have nots mm-hmm. and the uh, people that were whatever and whatever uh and the manufacturing industry is when we think of this i'm gonna let, i'm gonna wrap this back around to the last episode about letter kenny letter kenny refers to the people to some people as shirt tuckers right mm-hmm. the people that are going to end up in management the people yeah. that are going to end up tucking their shirt in and telling us all what to do you know and that the people that don't have their shirts tucked in are of a certain flavor no yeah no what we're talking about is like what am i willing to concede to in order to create enough money so that I can live the life that I want to live. Mm -hmm. What things inspire me enough to show up every day to make money so that I can do the things that I want to do. Um, And shirt tucking for me ain't it. So it it isn't about worthiness or non-worthiness. It has to do with um, creating some space that doesn't have to do with identifying a kid's value based on a test score. Is mm. what I would reduce it to. Yes. The standardized learning system, the school system, and a lot of this could be seen as like uh, conspiracy theory, right? But I, I think it institutionalization of education served a purpose. And mm. that was so that you could get a large group of people to follow a standard of rules, which is fine, because we do need to know that when there's an alarm, hit the deck or <laughs> run out. You know, like we need to, those are basic functions of like what we need a herd in order to, to do. We need to get kids on a regimented set schedule of like eating food, breakfast, mm-hmm. luncheon. And so there is a purpose for that. And it does feed. So that system of training children for those constraints 
was directly related to manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Like, how do we get people to involve themselves in the workforce? They have to get up every day. They got to do the thing. They respond to the bills. They eat the foods. They do the works. They go home. They take the naps. Like, yeah. they do the things that they're supposed to do. <laughs> and so that it's gotten further away and it's gotten, it, it ends up being more about how do we get our community to grow based mm -hmm. on the quality of our school systems rather than how do we get these kids to be involved in the things that are already here there's a disconnect because mm -hmm. they're looking at sending kids to colleges that are far away. 90% mm -hmm. of those kids return home to take care of their parents. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, if they, they don't know what factories are in their towns and those people are not like out, like being the mascot for the high school, they, they, they don't know, you mm -hmm. know, a banner is not going to get it for me. I don't care. I don't care about your banner around the baseball field. I don't care. Well, yeah, you bring up a good point. There is, you know, we do, we, you know, there's, there's, there, I think everybody would agree there is a disconnect between what you end up shooting for in college and job availability. Is why, you know, while obviously you do want some variety, but, you know, maybe it goes back to the whole job fair thing is how did, you know, when you, when you go and you're like, okay, I'm going to apply to this college. Oh, I got in. Oh my goodness. I got to come up with a major. How does that, why don't we ever tie that major at that point back to what job do you want to get? It's like, I want, you know, I want a degree in engineering. Why? And maybe that's a great degree. Maybe it's not, but all right, where, what's your end game? Yeah. <laughs> you what's know? your personal, uh, what's your personal relationship to that? Mm -hmm. So if it has to do with doing incredibly large amounts of difficult math, then fantastic. But like, what is what's beyond that because if it's not and you know that you want to solve problems for a living there's a lot of different ways that you can do it yeah you know and there's where i think engineering even goes wrong is there's an insane amount of math in engineering and really i see so many engineering roles that don't require math at all <laughs> you know and it's like okay so we just made somebody just go through the ringer we lost half of them back there in the second year and they're like, yeah, I definitely don't want to do that. They switch gears. They go into business. They go into something. They're just like, I just want to get my degree. But then they still had that passion initially. And then you find out that they, you know, well, they went here and then they did this. And now, oh, they're in an engineering role. And it's like, wait, okay, you just went from your English degree through this. And you took 10 years to get to where, extra years really, to get to where you wanted to go. Because all this freaking math that was in the engineering curriculum. I'm appreciative of the of that curriculum. I'm appreciative that somebody's willing to sign off on the work, right? Because it's not going to be me, right? <laughs> like I'm not going to sign my name to anything, but I, I have some ideas to contribute. And so what you're telling that people are not allowed to participate in that is now you can see where that got you. Now there's a whole bunch of people that think they can't participate because for years we've been saying, it's not for you, it's not for you, it's not for you. It's only for this specific kind of thing. And that's great because those people clearly still show up, right? Mm -hmm. The people that know that they're destined for that still show up. But why there isn't a whole lot of revolution in it is because we're turning the more creative minds, the ones that aren't as focused on that nitty gritty detail, that are more focused on the operational system of it. Um, then we lose that. I know a lot of engineers that can't solve, that can't make a peanut butter sandwich. You know what I mean? Like that when you tell them <laughs> put the peanut butter on the top of the bread, we watched a video yesterday that was hysterical where the kids were given uh, instructions on how to make a peanut butter sandwich. And I mean, he just did exactly what they were saying, just using the words extremely literally, which is exactly where a lot of us get in trouble. Mm -hmm. um, just being too literal. Uh, we, we need an Amelia Bedelia episode. We do need Amelia Bedelia. <laughs> just, go, just going through some of our things. Here, yeah. here is how this will work in real life if we actually took everything away. <laughs> and is Amelia Dealey subjectively, she's not wrong, you know? Yeah. She just wasn't your version of correct. And so when we tell people that they're not allowed to participate in uh, science, math, technology, art, anything, if we tell people that they're not allowed to participate, um, their desire to participate is still there. So they're going to find a way to get there. Um, and you're missing their energy. You're missing their enthusiasm. And enthusiasm is contagious. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's not fun to have sports teams without cheerleaders because cheerleaders generate support, you yeah. know? And so when someone can see what you're doing, they don't understand how it's happening, but they're just generally excited that you're doing it. To turn that away is just not part of the human condition that I want to be in. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I, um, I get back to... My daughter is, you know, she's not, she's not that engineering mindset, I guess you could say. 
but there's still you know ways you can work around it and you know we, we're, we're back <laughs> of all the things this seems like the most magical thing that i think everybody ought to do is the aluminum bowl and magnet thing we're back on that again i don't know if i told you that but yeah she's she's getting ready to do that for the science fair because it is fascinating if you haven't ever done this get a roll of aluminum bowl and just take it out of the box and drop a magnet through the middle of it and it will defy gravity and it's just fascinating you, you don't need you know a math degree or anything to just be like what that went a whole lot slower while i'm going through that too <laughs> yeah and you know it, it, even now you know we we did this several years ago even and it was fun then yeah and, and that was always about she's like you know i want to do some stem with them that's what we used to call it actually she just said the other day i want to do some more stem with them like oh gosh we haven't done that in years but okay but so uh, we we're probably going to do some more stem with them and but that was one of the early ones and really it was just like oh that was cool you know and that was her at what was that? It's probably like fifth or sixth grade. Two feet shorter. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But much shorter. And now here she is, and she's like, okay, how exactly does this work? Now she still doesn't want to do the math of it, but she is like, you know, I am curious. Yeah. Like, okay, there is some interaction going on with these electrons. Still not even sure what the electrons are. I know that they will shock me. And, you know, let's see if we can figure this. <laughs> You'll see when you dig a little deeper into it. Now, she doesn't need a full-blown quantum physics class right now. She just wants, you know, to nurture that curiosity a little bit. And I think there's where we miss it. You know, and even I have to watch it. I've got to stay throttled back. It's like, no, she's not interested <laughs> in, you know, full-blown learning about electricity right now or any of that. She, but she is curious. And, you know, trying to just find ways to nurture that curiosity without being like, oh, you don't get the math. Let's go ahead and direct you a different, you know, somewhere yeah. else. Yeah. And I appreciate that she hasn't, I mean, the lesson from two years ago, she hasn't abandoned that concept, you know, mm -hmm. like, oh, we did that and check mark, you know, we did a thing. But I like that she's circling back around because now her brain's a little bit more developed than it was when she was younger because that's how brains function. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and she just is gonna try it again because that's awesome i mean that's i mean we're talking about roller coasters that's how roller coasters work you know like that's, there's yeah. a lot of that involved um that you don't have to pick up a pen or stare at a dry erase board or um break any of that down you can think about the actual objects which is a whole lot more fun mm -hmm. um aesthetics is really important to some learners you know like and if it can be visually attractive it is more interesting yeah. a lot of us are not propelled to learn about things that are not interesting to us mm -hmm. and so if it looks like a hot mess you know it's not a hot mess to like a manufacturing world but it's a hot mess to uh, an incredibly artistic mind that likes for things to be attractive it's not going to be interesting at that right point. so i'm excited for her to see how she makes it visually yeah. attractive well and yeah where well yeah well and that's one thing and that's one um that's one reason i'm really excited that she's doing this is you know she has to make a presentation it has to be in the science fair and you know <laughs> you know on, on the side i'm just like i want to see what they come up with that we can steal to go yeah. <laughs> get other people interested <laughs> in this so do it'll our, do our pitch yes. get the kids to do the pitch well, awesome. well that's what we have to do we have to you know find the ways that they are interested because obviously there's a tremendous maturity gap between us and you know yeah a 13 year old but okay you know how can we you know get our mind kind of back to a 13 year old where we can be like okay here is how i would have been interested back there in this definitely yeah maybe they'll tell us you know what though wendell will probably charge us <laughs> <laughs> and i would be so proud I'd be like yes thank yeah. you for the bill just send me a bill yeah that would be great she would. <laughs> that's good. That's what you want to know. You know, that's how we're talking about it, is how can we use what we know? Is that's the whole point of the wonderful, great United States of America. Is if you can make money off of it, and it's not hurting other people, then investigate it more. Mm -hmm. um, well, and she is the ones that I would love to, to be able to captivate. Yeah, is, you know, some people are just naturally mechanically inclined, and they know it, and that's what they want to do. But she has such a creative mind, but it's kind of like, no, I don't know what I would ever do 
when I grow up. And it's like, you could do so many things with that mind. You know, if you could just connect a few dots, but I don't want to force her to connect those dots. I want to, you know, kind of just kind of plant those seeds and let her figure out yeah. what she's going to do. Like bumper bowling. Yeah, like when they put the bumpers up. You're like, the goal oh. is to get down there, right? We're yeah. building, building that. Yeah. It's intimidating, though, when people say, you can do anything. And you're like, well, you know. Yeah, you're right. What do you, what things can you concede to? Do you enjoy being in large groups of people? No. Okay, well, that, that eliminates a whole lot of stuff that you don't have to worry about. Not that you're not capable. You just don't want to. So, yeah. like, it's not that you can't. You just don't want to. And how we pose those, yeah, what words we use are important. Some people don't think so, and I uh, appreciate that as well, because not everybody's, again, not everybody's set up to communicate with words, right? Yeah. It goes with intention. Or Mary, Mary has an insane vocabulary to me. Yeah, that's what I always say. Um, can you use some smaller words to describe that? It's all made up. They're not even real. <laughs> I'm just making them up. Maybe, may, and she may be. Yeah, well, all words are made up, right? Yeah. So Mary <laughs> just makes them up as she goes, and I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about, but can you can you use smaller words and let's just break that down. <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> the the benefit of having two kids in in the household in your all's household is that that you can you can watch how they naturally react. You know, you've known them their whole lives, how they've naturally reacted and responded to things. Um, I was lucky enough to have both of your kids in a summer camp, and I got to see strengths in one that were identified strengths in the other that nobody talks about the other one having and mm -hmm. then vice versa and so it was fascinating to see how they still do like a non-verbal communication as siblings on what their strengths and weaknesses are mm -hmm. um and the weaknesses are not it's not a weakness at all it's just that it's done almost in the exact opposite way kind of like two twins that are conjoined you know like they right hand for me left hand for you our hands are literally separate and they're completely different and it's just one way of doing thing one thing and another way of doing the other mm -hmm. and that's possibly why there's purple legos right i'm not against purple legos i'm not against lego figurines with skirts at all like that's totally cool did i need that in order to be interested in it no but i can i know i know peers of mine that would have needed that the visual aesthetic of mm -hmm. Um, and I'm not going to call it permission, but I'm going to call it aesthetics, you know, like what appeals to that? I don't know. Projected toys through color coding is annoying. <laughs> I was going to say, I can't believe that you actually said you were okay with purple Legos. That was... Well, I mean, purple's the color. I like colors. Is it what I would wear or paint my room? No, but I can understand, like, I, I have friends that are out. Uh, my mom always used the word prissy. I don't know if that's okay to you. I don't know. But girls that were girlier and like mm -hmm. I had this reticence against it because I knew that it wasn't going to get me to the stuff that I wanted to learn about. I already knew that I had an interest in it, you know? And so for girls, I've got a girlfriend right now. She'll call me and she'll be like, I just got a new jigsaw. You know, she's wearing like dresses and flowers and like she's just totally that we're total opposites but like we're talking about tools together all day long and she's coming at it way later than i am mm -hmm. um she's coming at it from like an early childhood education that's what she's done professionally so her mind works like a child's i mean mm -hmm. like i'll i'll have a meltdown about something angry and she's like so what i'm hearing is <laughs> <laughs> your this need is unmet and i'm like thank you for helping me identify my feelings <laughs> uh you know but i mean purple legos for her girls I mean, they love bugs, critters, dirt, but they want the purple version. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not, I don't, I don't want the, you know, the other version. So I appreciate that those things exist. Um, but it's, it was created because some, some lady got up in there and was like, nah, I got some friends that probably needed it to be, needed mm -hmm. it to be purple. No. Yeah. Because well. we've been marketed that from even before we were born. Yeah. I had some friends that got, that got pregnant and like people in their circle were angry that they didn't know the sex of the baby you know because they couldn't project <laughs> on it through colors and, and you're just like well, why do you need to know what color stuff to buy my kids like it's gonna need some diapers and some wipes like we don't need yeah. color-coded things well, and yeah and, and, you know, from a practical perspective yeah diapers the most important thing forget about the color stuff yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> if that baby's got some diapers on it it is good it's for a good while. we're good we're golden we don't need it to be color-coded nobody needs to know but since we're talking about colors, one, we probably need to get some work done. We do. But 
color. So let's get a little work done and then let's talk a little bit about art. Okay. And how in the world art and engineering link up. Right on. All right. Well, Mary, let's go do some work and then we'll be back. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber with TW Controls. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And you two think you'll like these. When you're ready for some intense PLC training, check out our PLC lab. And if our videos have helped you out and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.